Hey, everybody, before we start the Season 2 recap, if you need a Season 1 recap, there's a little thing at the top there. Click that. You'll get the Season 1 recap. But in Season 2, it picks up right after Season 1 left off, with Yusef turning to Hassan and saying, Lupin? But he doesn't introduce himself as a cop. Honestly, he doesn't really have time. Claire runs up and says, yes, our son is missing. He's dressed up as Lupin. And Yusef informs them that he saw somebody take some kid and put him into a gray car and take off. So both Hassan, Claire, and Yusef run to the parking lot, looking to see if they can get eyes on the car, but it's long gone. And Claire loses it on Hassan, yelling at him, this is all your fault. Hassan goes and hot wires a car, and the whole time he's telling Claire, don't call the police. But she tells him, if you leave, I'm going to call the police. And he assures her, I can take care of this, don't call the police. And he gets in the car. When he does, though, Yusef also gets in the car. And Hassan kind of looks at him like, what are you doing? And Yusef tells him, I'm here to help. So Hassan doesn't really put up a fight, and the two men head off. But Claire did as she said. She calls the police. Although when the two detectives arrive, they're not much help. They tell her, eh, we'll file a report. Then that report after 24 hours, we'll go to another report. And Claire gets so upset and says, all right, you're useless. I'm heading off and I'll find my son myself. While Claire was talking to the police, Asan and Yusef are trying to play catch up. They realize that there's only one road that that car could have gone down. And luckily for them, Leonard had to pull over because he realized he was heading into town and it's not the best look to have a child in the back tied up. So he pulled the car over and put Raul in the trunk. He tries to get a hold of Pellegrini, but he can't because there's no reception, which is also an issue for Yusef. He's trying to get a hold of Sophia, but he can't. And he tells Hassan that once they do get service, he has to get in touch with his, quote, wife, or else she's going to be pissed because she can't get a hold of him. Because of the fact there's no service, this forces Leonard to pull over in that town. And he walks into a bar where immediately everything stops. Everybody's staring at him because he's the only black guy in the bar. When he has to use the phone, the guy says, for customers only. So Leonard buys something and is able to use the phone and call Pellegrini and tell him that he followed Hassan, but there was a small setback and he's got his kid now. Pellegrini informs him that he doesn't care about the son. He cares about the father. So clean up the mess. Do it quickly. Leonard hangs up the phone, walks back to the car. But as he's sitting there ready to take off, he notices that a car came in hot. And that's because Hassan and Yusef have shown up. Yusef actually walks into the bar that Leonard just left. And because Yusef isn't black, he gets to use the phone without being a customer. He calls up Sophia and informs her that he is with Hassan. She's pretty taken aback at how far he's taken this because, remember, he was supposed to be sick that day. But then he has to speed up the phone call because he sees that Hassan is about to walk back in after getting no answers from anybody on the street if they've seen a car or a boy. So Yusef hurries up the phone but does let Sophia know, I'm going to need backup. And just like with Leonard, as soon as Hassan walks in the bar, everybody stops and stares at him because he's black. And racism is something he's dealt with before. When he was a kid, somebody stole Claire's violin right before a recital. And when she went to go get a new one, the guy told her how much it would cost and it was way too much money. And Hassan noticed that they had a sign up for rentals. But the guy told him that he wasn't willing to rent to him. And it was obviously because he was black. So Hassan did what Hassan does. He joined up with Ben and decided he's going to steal one. He waited for the guy to leave and stole the violin. When he gave it to Claire, she was thrilled to see it. I mean, he saved the day. But he lied to Claire and said that he didn't steal it and it was just being borrowed. Later that day, Asan and Ben headed to the recital and they're watching Claire play the violin beautifully. But then all of a sudden, the police show up. And when they do, it stops Claire dead in her tracks. But they don't come for Claire, who is actually holding the violin. They arrest Asan. They do end up taking that violin, but this is a good example that Hassan's line to Claire started way back in the day. It's worth noting, though, if the guy wasn't a racist piece of shit, this never would have happened. Anyway, nobody really answers Hassan when he pleads at the bar. Has anyone seen a mixed racial kid? He's got frizzy hair. And the bartender yells at him, saying, I have customers. To which Hassan grabs him by the back of the neck and says, does it sound like I'm playing? And at that point, somebody does say, yeah, actually, the guy's driving off right there. And Hassan and Yusef see the car speed by. So they get in their car and they chase after it. But as they're trying to play catch up, Sophia texts Yusef, I'm on my way. And you can't really tell whether Hassan sees it or not, but Yusef grabs the phone pretty quickly and says, ah, oh, it's from my wife. They continue to race after the car, but they get to a railroad crossing. And Leonard's car makes it with ease. Hassan, though, has to really floor it, narrowly missing the train. But this gave Leonard enough time to sort of get away. He turned off on a random road and drove up to an abandoned, dilapidated house. I mean, this thing hadn't been touched in years. Leonard breaks in, takes Raul out, and ties him up to a chair. He then grabs the phone and texts Hassan, who is looking for any hint of the car, not finding it. But he texts Hassan pretending to be Raul. He says, hey dad, I was able to get away. I'm in this old house. And Hassan texts him back saying, let's do like Lupin does with his daughter. But Yusef points out, hey man, it's not his daughter, it's his son. And Hassan tells him that Raul is a diehard Lupin fan. He'll pick up on the mistake. 
And if he doesn't, then that means they're walking into a trap. And sure enough, Leonard tells on himself. So they know that Raul isn't actually the one texting him. But at this point, they've located the house. Instead of sneaking in, though, Hassan stands right in the middle of the field and calls the cell phone and tells Leonard, if you hurt my son, I'm going to kill you. And Leonard stares back at him and says, if you want your son, come get him. So they hang up the phone and Hassan starts walking back to the car and Yusef says, hey man, we should call the police. But Hassan tells him we can't because they're either in that guy's pocket or they're incompetent. Hassan starts fishing through the trunk for anything that can help him and then he gets back in the car and asks Yusef, how long till they show up? And Yusef says, what are you talking about? And Hassan says, the police. They're the ones you called earlier. They're your wife because you're actually a cop. I know all about you. Yusef starts to tell him that he's been tracking him for a while, and only he's the one that figured out who he actually was. And he would arrest him if he was armed, but he's not. He then asks how much time, and Yusef says an hour, maybe less. And he's pretty accurate because Sophia is on her way. She's about an hour and a half out. Asan then thanks him and gets out of the car, and when Yusef tries to leave, he can't because Asan tied him up and tells him, I told you. I don't work with police. By the time Hassan enters the house, though, it's nightfall. And Leonard closed up all the doors, all the windows, so it's pitch black in the house. He's also set up some booby traps to let him know where Hassan might be, like a broken glass, but Hassan is onto it. Hassan starts slowly sneaking through the house with a flashlight, looking for Raul. And Leonard is doing the same thing. He's looking for Hassan, though, with a shotgun that he was able to find in the house. Eventually, though, Hassan also arms himself with a pool cue he found. And when the two men find each other, they start going at it. Hassan trying to wiggle the shotgun away from him because he realized he brought a pool cue to a gunfight. And the two men trade shots back and forth until finally Hassan gets the better of Leonard by literally throwing him out the upstairs window. When Hassan looks down on the ground, it looks like Leonard is dead. But he's not. He's just really pissed off. Hassan starts frantically looking through the house for Raul, but he's not finding him. And that's because while Hassan was talking to Yusef in the car, Leonard was busy transporting Raul from the house back to the trunk of the car. And when Leonard gets up, he decides to go douse that car with gasoline, light it on fire, and text Hassan back saying, next time, maybe you should look in the car. And by the time Hassan gets downstairs, he arrives in just enough time to see the car explode. He's crying beside himself because he feels like he just watched his son die. And it's at this moment that Sophia arrives and tells him to get on his knees at gunpoint, which he does. But he's telling her, my son was in there. She doesn't care, though. She thinks it's just a trap, but it's not. And he just continues to cry. In episode two, Sophia calls police and the fire department to put out the fire on the car. She takes Hassan into custody and her, along with another police officer, start taking him back to Paris. But the whole time he's asking, what did you find in the trunk? Did you find my son? And at first, Sophia isn't answering the question because she thinks it's just another one of his tricks. Finally, she says, you know what we found? Nothing. We found nothing in the trunk. And that's because Raul was able to get away. After Hassan left Youssef, He wasn't just going to sit in that car and wait. He broke the window and ended up cutting the zip tie with a broken piece of glass. When he headed to the house, that's when he saw the car on fire and he heard somebody screaming from inside of it to help. So he helped. He jimmied open the trunk and was able to get Raul out of there. But as they were heading back to the car that Yusef was tied up in, Leonard started shooting at them. Yusef and Raul were able to get away, but Leonard ended up calling Pellegrini and letting him know that one of Dumont's men had Raul. Now, Hassan doesn't know any of this, but he's just thrilled to find out that his son wasn't found in that car. Now he's got to figure out how to get out of police custody. When they stop off for gas, Sophia looks at him and says, don't even think about it. And he says, oh, don't worry. I'm not going to escape till we get back to Paris, which somehow does kind of put her mind at ease a little bit. He has to use the bathroom. And while she's reluctant, what is she going to do? Make the guy pee his pants? Being your pants isn't cool. So she sends the other police officer to go monitor him while she goes and pays for gas. That's a bad idea. Hassan tells the guy that he needs to come into the bathroom with him because he can't do anything in handcuffs. And he ends up getting out of the handcuffs, handcuffing the police officer to the toilet and escaping. He still has Yusef's badge, so he tells a civilian, sir, you have a flat tire. And then he takes the gun he confiscated and shoots the police vehicle's tire and says, oh, my bad, wrong car. But then he steals the guy's vehicle and heads off and escapes. Sophia is really upset that she was that stupid. Sophia is really upset that she fell for that. And then she has to call Dumont and let him know what happened. When Dumont gets the news, he heads over and meets with Pellegrini to let him know that, once again, Assam was able to get away. And Pellegrini kind of chuckles and says, well, at least you have a son, which is something that Dumont didn't even know. Pellegrini informs Dumont that one of his guys, Yusef Gadira, has his son and is heading back into town. So Pellegrini says, we're just going to use his son as bait. This is going to make things so much easier because he's going to come right to us. When Hassan shows up, you arrest him, you and my men. 
Dumont, though, hates this idea because it's acting out of procedure. But Pellegrini reminds him this is the most wanted man in France. None of his bosses are going to care about procedure once he arrests him. And since Dumont is in his pocket, he agrees. When he gets out of the meeting with Pellegrini, he texts Youssef, Great job with the Diop kid. Call me. But unbeknownst to him, Hassan has Youssef's phone. So he's actually the one reading this. He texts Dumont back, I can't talk, I'm driving. And Dumont texts back, okay, that's fine. Just bring the kid to the Park Hyatt Hotel. I'll explain everything there. And Hassan responds with, I'm on my way. And the reason that Dumont wants Raul brought to the Park Hyatt Hotel is because the Pellegrini Foundation is having a fundraiser there that night. But Hassan wants to do more research on why they're picking the Hyatt. So he goes home, and a quick Google search brings up a video of Pellegrini and Juliet on the news talking about how their foundation was robbed, but they refuse to let that get in the way of helping others. So they're organizing a dinner that night at the hotel with generous donors. Now Hassan just needs to figure out how he's going to get in. And he starts looking at his disguises and formulating a plan for that night. Around that same time, though, Youssef arrives back in town with Raul. He heads back to Raul's house to drop him off, but he doesn't find Claire. He doesn't find Hassan. What he finds is guys who are claiming to be on the force telling him, what are you doing with the kid here? He's supposed to be at the Hyatt. Take him over there. So Youssef does as he's told. He takes Raul over to the hotel where he's greeted by Dumont, who congratulates him on bringing in the kid. Yusuf asks him, where's Hassan? And Dumont pulls him away from Raul and says, listen, man, this case has gone all the way to the top. We can't keep letting this guy make us look like idiots. I'm now handling the case personally. We also have reason to believe the kid's in danger. I can't tell you what information because it's confidential, but what I will tell you is if the kid stays with me, he's going to be safe. Yusuf, though, isn't willing to just go home and pat himself on the back. He tells Dumont, I don't get all this. What's going on? And Dumont pulls rank, telling him, do I have to tell you how to obey orders? That's not really a choice, so Youssef has to leave Raul with Dumont. When Youssef gets back to the station that day, he has a package waiting for him. He opens it up to find his cell phone with a note that says, thank you, Ganemard, who is his favorite character from Lupin. It's the police officer in the story. So that puts a smile on Youssef's face. I think mainly because he got his cell phone back and buying a cell phone is really expensive. Back at the hotel, though, Dumont promises Raul that it'll be over soon, and then he takes him up to the hotel room to wait. But now that they've laid the trap, they need to get Hassan's attention. So they have Raul call up Hassan and tell him, I'm at the Hyde Hotel, and then hang up. After the phone call, Pellegrini has a conversation with Raul, where he tells him that his father's a criminal, just like his father back in the day. Raul doesn't want to believe it, but he also can't explain what his dad does for a living. He also tells Raul that Hassan doesn't give a damn about his family, and Raul is saying that's not true. And Pellegrini says, well, I guess we'll see, because he's on his way here. But that night, the dinner kicks off. Juliette Pellegrini is introduced to the president of the foundation, and she starts giving a speech to the donors about how everybody deserves culture. That is the whole mission of this foundation. And as she's waxing poetic downstairs to all these high rollers trying to get in their wallets, Dumont is upstairs with Raul as they wait for Hassan to show his face. But Hassan's not just going to walk through the door. The plan he's come up with is to pose one of the hotel staff. He puts on a piss-poor disguise, and he is able to get in the hotel via the back way. But his disguise was so bad that one of the security staff members notices him because they were all tipped off to what Hassan might look like. It forces Hassan to change his entire plan. He starts getting recognized by security officer after security officer, and a couple of them he actually has to knock out or else he would be apprehended. Hassan isn't able to actually look around the hotel for Raul, he has to walk out front and formulate a new plan. And that's when he remembers what he did as a kid with the violin situation. After he was arrested for stealing the violin, he got sent to the principal's office because the principal wanted to figure out what he wanted to do with him. But as he was sitting there waiting for the principal to walk in, the principal got a phone call from the violin store owner telling him that he wanted Hassan persecuted up to the fullest extent of the law. Hassan didn't want the principal to hear this, so he stole the answering machine tape. He had Ben listen to it, and they tried to figure out what they were going to do, because they couldn't just steal the tape and let that be. The principal was planning on heading to the violin store to ask the guy what he wanted to do with Hassan if he didn't hear back from him. The plan back then that they came up with is simply calling the principal using a fake voice and saying, you know, I think I've had a change of heart. After all, the principal never heard the violin owner's actual voice. But this is 2021. There's better technology than that. So Hassan heads back to his hideout and puts that technology into use. Using a bunch of voice modifiers and interviews with Pellegrini, he's able to call Dumont and make it look like it's from Pellegrini's actual cell phone. He's then able to talk to Dumont, where Dumont doesn't hear Hassan's voice, but he hears Pellegrini's. And at this point, Dumont's on edge, because he knows that Hassan was spotted in the hotel, but they don't know where he is. So Hassan, posing as Pellegrini, says, You gotta get the kid out of here now. We don't know where Hassan is, we've lost control of the situation, 
and that kid is our only bargaining chip. And Dumont's a little taken aback by this, but he's a lapdog, so he does as he's told. The whole time, Asan, pretending to be Pellegrini, is directing Dumont downstairs with Raul and telling him to put Raul in a van where he's waiting for him. Dumont thinks he did a great job, and he heads back into the dinner to get his pat on the head from Pellegrini. But as he's staring at Pellegrini, he gets a phone call from Pellegrini's cell, and that's when he realizes that he's been played by Hassan. He has to fess up to Pellegrini about what happened, about how once again they got duped by Hassan. But Pellegrini surprisingly isn't mad about it. He turns to Dumont and says, this is why you have backups. And that backup is shockingly Claire. As Claire was heading back to Paris on the train, pretty depressed, she saw a newspaper article about the killed journalist. She also saw Assange's disguise from the news, and she had a feeling that Pellegrini had something to do with her son being kidnapped. So she went to go visit him. She offered him a deal. You want your necklace back? Well, here's proof that I have it. And she gave him one diamond. She said, when I get my son back, you get the rest of your diamond back. But to her surprise, Pellegrini said, that's great. I don't want the necklace anymore. What I want is Assan. So she made a deal with Pellegrini. And when Hassan and Raul show up, Claire is waiting for them at the apartment. But it's Claire and a bunch of Pellegrini's men. You can tell she has mixed emotions about what she's doing. And she asks the guys, can I just have a few minutes alone with my son? And they agree. So when Raul comes upstairs, Claire goes and meets them in the hallway. And she gives Raul a big hug. But by the look on her face, Hassan can tell that something's not right. And that's when Claire mouths to him, run. In episode 3, Hassan is able to get away from the guys, but he heads to the attic and overhears a conversation between Claire and Raul. Raul asks, who were those guys? And Claire only wants to focus on if he's okay, and he says, yeah, I'm fine. Dad saved me. He was great. And she says, no, he's not great. He's dangerous. Raul says, nah, that's not true. But she says, no, it is. You're old enough to know who your dad is. He's dangerous. I don't want you seeing him. And Raul kind of had half the story. When they were driving over, he asked Hassan, are you really a thief? And Hassan said, well, you're old enough to know. 25 years ago, Pellegrini framed my dad, and now he's coming after you. So all of a sudden, his mom telling him that his dad is this horrible guy, kind of coming out of left field. But she gives him a huge hug and says, this is the last time he puts you in danger. I'm not going to let you see him again. And a week later, she's been true to her word. She's not answering Hassan which is pissing him off. He meets with Ben for coffee, and he starts ranting and raving about how Claire has no right to keep him in the dark and not answer his texts or anything. And Ben reminds him, her son was kidnapped. This is kind of normal behavior. But Hassan feels like ratting him out to Pellegrini is going too far. Ben wants to get off topic, so he says, okay, well, what's the new plan? And Hassan says, well, if Pellegrini took it out on my son, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to take it out on his daughter. They start putting a plan together to manipulate Juliet. It starts out with Ben booking a reservation for two near a window at a restaurant. He then called Juliet and pretended to be a rich Canadian donor that wanted to meet with her for dinner at that restaurant. Of course, the rich Canadian donor was never going to show up. After that, it's kind of all on Hassan and Juliet to buy in. She needs to believe that he would do anything for her. After forming the beginning stage of the plan with Ben, he calls up Youssef, which completely takes him off guard but lets him know that on Monday he wants to meet with him at a coffee place at 10 a.m. And he tells Yusef, do not bring the police, I will know. The next night, the first phase of their plan goes into effect. Hassan happens to stroll by that restaurant where Juliet ends up noticing him, knocking on the window and inviting him in because she's being stood up. Hassan plays it off like he's being trapped the whole time knowing that he's not. In fact, he actually plays it off like she had planned to be there and run into him. He starts questioning which members of the wait staff are her security. He tells her that everything has gone too far, but she says, I don't know what you mean. I mean, I know everything hasn't been great with our families over the years, but we're not our fathers. Their relationship has poisoned our relationship. The reality is, there's no catch, Asan. I'm here alone. Feel free to leave if you want to, but the food's really good. And when the waiter comes back, Asan decides to stay. As Asan and Juliet catch up over Salmon, her father is meeting with a young financial analyst, we'll call him, named Philip. He lets Pellegrini know that calculations are pointing to them getting about $10 million in donations. 15% is going to go to the foundation. 85% is going to go to an offshore bank account in Hubert Pellegrini's name. After explaining the specifics, Philip asks him, I do have one question. Is Juliet participating in this fraud? And while Hubert hates using that word, he shakes his head. No, she's not. But back at the restaurant, Juliet and Hassan continue to catch up over the good old days and about how different their lives become from what they expected it to be. They actually decide to spice it up in a big way. They dine and dash. Although, it's not really dine and dash because Ben has already paid for the check. This is all part of the plan. 
They then steal a scooter, which was also part of the plan. But it's genius because it makes everything look so spontaneous. And as Hassan and Juliet flee, Hassan starts taking her through a trip down memory lane, if you will, hitting all of their former favorite spots. When Hassan finally drops her off, they both say how they had such a good time. But the next day is phase two, Hassan going to visit Juliet as she tours an art gallery. As Juliet is talking to the museum curator, she sees in the balcony Hassan waiting for her. So she excuses herself to go talk to Hassan and says, look, last night we had fun, and Hassan cuts her off and says, well, today could be fun too. And she says, I adored last night, but we're not 20 now. She then excuses herself and heads back to the office where she runs into her dad and Philip. And her dad introduces her to Philip as the guy who's building the system to assist in donations. She then gets informed that a package has arrived for her in her office. But right before she opens it, she starts getting a flurry of notifications on her phone, on her email. And when she opens it up, she finds news articles and even a video of the museum curator that she was talking to being interviewed about a stolen painting. Now, this was all also part of Assange's plan. He manipulated the footage. The footage was actually from when Notre Dame got caught on fire, but he changed the headline from Notre Dame to this painting. So at this point, Julia has a pretty good idea of what this package is, but she opens it up to confirm that it is the, quote, stolen painting, painting that isn't actually stolen. It's a complete fake. Ben took care of everything. Assange couldn't stop there, though. He actually paid off some former prison buddies to come over to the place, pretend to be cops, and interview Juliet about the stolen art. This completely sold it. It also ensured Hassan that Juliet would come calling again. And of course she does. She meets up with him and says, are you crazy? You can't just steal a painting and send it to me? And he's kind of chuckling a little bit about it, but she's freaking out because of the, quote, police that stopped by her place. She asks him, what are you doing? The dinner, the ride on the scooter, now the painting. You made your choice. You chose Claire. And Hassan says, well, yes, Claire is the mother of my child, but that's all she is to me. She tells him to shut up and starts walking away. And he goes, no, no, no. Deep down, you have feelings for me. I mean, look, there are no police. You didn't rat me out this time. Just the two of us. We both want this. Maybe it's not too late. So Juliet turns to him and says, well, prove it. Juliet has this hobby of spying on Claire via Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. And recently, Claire posted a photo of her with her new boyfriend and a bracelet that Claire's wearing that he bought her. So Juliet wants that bracelet. She wants Hassan to steal it for her to prove his loyalty. There is a slight issue, though. When Hassan goes to Ben about the bracelet, Ben has to tell him, I kind of sold it to him. And it's not like there's another one out there. It's the only one. So unfortunately, if you do want the bracelet, you're going to have to steal it from Claire. This was not a part of the plan. And it forces Hassan to break into Claire's apartment and actually steal the bracelet right off her wrist. While Claire and her boyfriend are sleeping, super awkward. But mission accomplished. He meets up with Juliet the next day and hands her the bracelet. He tells Juliet that he wants to start with a clean slate. That includes returning the stolen art that, once again, isn't actually stolen. He tells Juliet that they never actually got to start a relationship that they wanted to. And that is true. When they were kids, Juliet ran into his son down by a waterway and invited him there the next day. But when she went to actually go meet with him, Hubert got wind of it and shut it down completely. So a relationship between the two when they were kids really wasn't allowed to get off the ground floor. But when Hassan brings it up, Juliet kind of gets annoyed and says, what, you want me to pick between you and my dad? And Hassan tells her, 25 years ago, your dad framed my dad for stealing that necklace. If you don't believe me, ask your mother. She knows. Your mom will tell you the truth about your dad, what he did. Once you've heard the whole story... You'll do what's right. He then gives her an envelope with Yousef's contact information, telling her that it's a cop that they can trust. He caps it off with a cherry on top, telling her that they missed their chance when they were young, but they can do what they want now. And she is completely infatuated with him. And this is exactly what Asan needed. He needed her to be infatuated with him if she was going to turn on her dad. She hands over the necklace and gives it to Asan, who does end up sending it back to Claire. But right before he does take off, he tells her, you'll know exactly where to find me which is that waterway that they ran into each other years ago when they were kids. And then Juliet heads on over to her mom's place to get the full rundown of exactly what happened between Hubert Pellegrini and Bob Carr. And Ann Pellegrini admits to everything, how Hubert needed a fall guy, and that was Bob Carr. And the reason she didn't tip off the police at the time was Hubert Pellegrini was Juliet's dad, and she looked at her dad like a hero. Juliet urges her mom to go tell the truth, talk to the police. And then she hands over the envelope that has Yousef's contact information in it. And part of that contact information is where to meet Yousef. It's the whole reason why Hassan called him and said, I want to meet for coffee. It wasn't for Yousef to meet Hassan, it was for Yousef to meet Ann Pellegrini and hear her side of things. 
Sure enough, Ann Pellegrini shows up and spills everything. And shortly after Hubert signs the paperwork with Philip, Yusef and the police captain bust on through and arrest Hubert for fraud and obstruction of justice. And it's worth mentioning that when Hubert Pellegrini gets arrested, Philip looks as shocked as Hubert does. This arrest hits the news and Ben's thrilled. He thinks mission is accomplished. But then he gets a phone call from Hassan telling him, yeah, I'm going to be a little late because I got to go meet with Juliet. And that wasn't a part of the plan. Ben urges him not to go meet with Juliet, saying, Hassan, it's done. But Hassan just says, I promise I won't be long, and then hangs up. And he goes down and meets Juliet, just like they had planned. In episode four, the police bring Hubert Pellegrini in for questioning, but he's more interested with threatening them with their jobs than actually answering their questions. He's got friends in high places, so he's not really willing to cooperate. They question him about the insurance claim against the necklace and then him trying to sell it, but he passes that off as, yeah, that's not really unusual. Plus, I gave the insurance money back. Sophia then asks him, do you know this man? And hands him a picture of Hassan. And he says, of course I do. It's Hassan Diop. He's the guy who stole the necklace a few weeks back, just like his father did back in the day. And Hassan Diop is a name that the police weren't familiar with. This is the first time they actually get Hassan's real name. Up until this, they thought his name was Paul Cernin. They then pull out a picture of Leonard and ask Pellegrini, do you know who he is? And Pellegrini is very reluctant to answer that question. He plays it off like he's thinking, he's not sure. And the reason they're asking him is because Leonard was arrested on a train with a gun. The gun was purchased under a fake name with an address in Paris, an address that is owned by Hubert Pellegrini. Pellegrini passes it off, though, that he must be a tenant. He doesn't know the everyday goings-on with his tenants. And the police captain asks him, well, he used a fake name. Do you have any idea why he would do that? Pellegrini says, why don't you go ask him? They are planning on doing that. And the reason being is they're pretty sure that Leonard was the one who tried to kidnap Raul back in Normandy. They continue to pester Pellegrini on who Leonard is, what's his real name, but that's when Pellegrini gets that phone call from his powerful friend who instructs the police department to let Pellegrini go, and they don't have a choice. Yusef's pissed off about that because it feels like it's an abuse of power, but the police captain's okay with it for the time being because at least they got something out of it. They got Hassan's name. And Hassan has started his day off by scamming a guy who seems to be walking to work. As the guy's walking, somebody bumps into him and then steals his briefcase. Hassan, pretending to be a bystander, runs after the guy, grabbing the briefcase and returning it. But when he returns it to the guy, the guy tells Hassan, thanks so much, man, have a nice day. And Hassan responds, have a nice day, Lucas. And then he walks off, which is very confusing to the guy. He then goes and meets with Juliet, who is freaking out a little bit. She's wondering what the hell did she just do? She knows her father's going to try to figure out who tipped off the police. And Hassan reminds her, you didn't talk to the police. Your mother did. And the police officer that your mother spoke to is a good guy. He won't talk. Don't worry. Juliet starts talking about how she wants to cancel the concert they're having for their foundation because this could be a really negative look with her father being arrested. But Hassan says, no, you can't. If you cancel, that's going to look even more suspicious. Plus, this concert's going to raise a lot of money for kids who need it. Don't abandon the kids, the foundation, their future. Don't abandon that just because of this. If you abandon this concert, your father ends up winning. He continues to try to press Juliet on not canceling the concert, but then he gets a phone call from Ben. He takes it thinking it's an emergency, but it's not. Ben just wants to get rid of the dog. Every time he even thinks Pellegrini, the dog barks. The dog is driving him nuts. Hassan tells Ben, okay, man, I'll take the dog back. Just meet me at my place with him. So Ben packs up the dog and heads to Hassan's place, which is an issue. Because after being arrested, Pellegrini is out for blood. He gets his two goons together, Leonard and Pasquale. And Pasquale has done a little digging and called up the cemetery where Fabian is buried and offered to pay for the funeral, pretending to be a relative. But he was informed that the funeral was already paid for. And that was pretty interesting to him because she didn't have any friends and her dog didn't pay for it. He wanted the person's name, saying that he wanted to just thank the person. And the name they gave him was B.T.A. Farrell. And B.T.A. Farrell is run by Benjamin Farrell. The fact that Ben specializes in gemstones and the kind of shop he runs, they figure that this has got to be Diop's accomplice. It makes perfect sense. So if Ben really knows Diop, the plan is to put him under surveillance and tail him. Pellegrini instructs Leonard to be the one to tail him. But as Leonard leaves to go find Ben, Pellegrini pulls Pascal aside and tells him that Leonard has a lot to atone for and instructs him that as Leonard is tailing Ben, Pascal is to tail Leonard. And when Leonard finally gets into Hassan's house, to kill Leonard. And the plan goes just as expected. Ben leaves his shop with the dog in tow, unknowingly being tailed by Leonard, and he leads Leonard right to Hassan's place. Hassan takes the dog from Ben, says goodbye, puts on an album, and then starts making dinner. He doesn't even notice that Leonard has snuck into his house. And he definitely doesn't notice when Pascal sneaks up from behind Leonard and kills him. As Pascal flees Hassan's place, he calls the police and tells them 
that he just heard a fight going down at the address and they should send somebody over. And a short time after that, when Hassan turns around, the dog isn't there because the dog is sniffing Leonard's dead body. And now Hassan knows, yeah, I got an issue. He gets out of his place just in the nick of time, just before the police show up. But now Hassan Diop is the most wanted man in Paris. He's wanted for murder and he's wanted for stealing the necklace. This news is shocking for a few people, mainly his family, Claire and Raoul, Juliet, who is floored, but also for Youssef. Sophia can tell that something's bothering Youssef, and he says, this doesn't make sense. I thought Hassan Diop was Lupin. Lupin is the gentleman burglar. He doesn't kill people. But Sophia looks at him and says, well, maybe in the books, Gadira, but in the real world, Diop is a killer. The police have Hassan's picture plastered all over Paris, and they start going over his apartment looking for clues on where he might be. They also recognize Leonard as the guy that they were supposed to question. But as Sophia and the police captain are going over Leonard's body, Dumont pulls the captain aside and tells him that he wants only him and the police captain going over the evidence. He tells him it's a sensitive case, and only them two will have access to it. But Pellegrini's men weren't going after just Hassan. Pascal is also going after Ben who got a tip from Hassan that they were probably coming after him too. So Ben flees. The whole time, though, he's on the phone with Hassan as Hassan gives him directions. And Ben can tell that he's being followed by somebody. Hassan gives Ben directions to a bus stop because he knows the guy won't kill him in broad daylight. He then instructs Ben to hop on the bus, but just as it's about to leave, to hop off of it. This works, actually. He loses his tail, and that's when Hassan meets up with him. The two men end up going to a sort of safe house they have. Really, it's just a storage facility. And it's a good thing that Hassan tipped off Ben, because Pellegrini texts Dumont that Ben is Hassan's accomplice. He pulls the police captain aside and asks, is the evidence secure? And the police captain assures him that it is. He then gives him the post-it note with Ben's address for the flea market shop and tells him, we're pretty sure this guy is working with Hassan. Go check it out. So the police captain grabs Sophia but tells Youssef, you stay here. The police go over to Ben's store and start going through everything, trying to find a hint of where they might have gone. And then Sophia finds it. It's a little slip of paper that Ben forgot to get rid of with an address at the storage facility. So the police head over there. But Ben and Hassan are just chilling. Ben thinks they need to get out of Paris, but Hassan says, if I leave Paris, that's going to admit I'm guilty, and I'm not. I need to clear my name. One way he figures he can do that is by writing a cryptid message in the comments section of an article all about him. Ben thinks it's nuts, but Hassan hopes that Youssef sees it and deciphers it. Hassan reassures Ben, though, that they didn't do what they did for nothing. His plan at the concert will prove that he's innocent. But then all of a sudden, they hear clamoring outside, and they know that it's the police. They know they need to get the hell out of there. Luckily for them, they've thought of this. They have a secret exit. The exit goes to the catacombs, and right before they leave, they grab a secret map that they got when they were kids and visited the catacombs a map of all the tunnels that the public doesn't have access to. So they grab that map and they head down, hoping that they could evade the police. Eventually, the police do end up finding the storage unit, opening it up, and finding the trap door. The police end up running into the catacombs looking for Hassan, but all they find is a guide tour. They tell the guide, you need to shut down all entrances and exits to the catacombs. But that's not even going to matter. With that map that they have, Hassan and Ben are able to take another tunnel that's not even known about and take another exit that leads them into the middle of a park. They knew about this because they did it when they were kids. They split up but then agree to meet up that night and as they're looking at the venue of the concert of the foundation, Hassan knows that within 24 hours, he'll be innocent. But the good thing for Hassan is Youssef had nothing to do and he did pick up on that message. He ended up deciphering it where the message was Jewish lamp. Yusef realized that what Hassan was referring to was the menorah that was taken from his place and put into evidence. And even though no one else is supposed to go into evidence other than the police captain and Dumont, Yusef ends up sneaking in there, finding it, and busting open one of the candles to find a USB drive. When he plugs it in, it's all the information on his father, on his case, and how Dumont is actually working with Pellegrini. But at the exact time that Yusef is finding out that his police commissioner is dirty, the police commissioner heads over to meet with Pellegrini. Dumont walks in with Pellegrini, Pascal, and Philip in a room together, and he tells them that they've collected Hassan's items, all they need to do now is destroy it, anything that could link back to them. Dumont turns to Pellegrini and says, you still need to be careful though, because my men are asking a lot of questions. They're pretty close to realizing what's actually going on here. Pellegrini tells him, relax, the only thing you need to do is attend the concert, and then, within 24 hours, you're going to be almost as rich as I am. Enjoy this, because the money is on its way, and... It's the beginning of a new life. And in the season finale, Hassan's plan for the concert that night has been weeks in the making. It started with Ben and Hassan sneaking another drone into Pellegrini's place where they were able to get the name of his financial advisor. 
His financial advisor is the guy who Hassan was able to retrieve the briefcase of. The guy who knocked into him was actually Ben. They realized that they needed to get the information in that briefcase. So Ben knocked into him, stole it, ran to his car, downloaded all the information, and then Hassan brought it back. Now with Pellegrini's financial information, Hassan realized they need an accomplice. And they need an accomplice who's like-minded. So they head to the library and stake out the Lupin section. And it takes a while. But eventually, they find their guy. Because to the trained Lupin eye, it's pretty clear that Hassan is not actually reading the book. And the book that Ben's reading is upside down. They get that person. It's a gothic-looking kid, but he nails the test. They ask him if he wants to be a part of what they're doing, and he says, okay. So the first thing they have to do is give him a whole new look. So they create a new identity for this guy. He's going to be a financial expert who's going to worm his way into Pellegrini's inner circle by promising risky financial practices for high returns. In return, he's going to get a diamond now and a bigger diamond when the job is done. That person ended up being Philip. The next step is to play Lucas, the financial manager that Pellegrini already has. Hassan calls him up pretending to be a guy from Brussels, telling Lucas that there's some hotshot analyst out there who's trying to steal his clients, and he wanted to warn him. He tells him the name is Philip Corbet and to watch out for him. But Lucas is someone who clearly doesn't know his clientele because he calls up Pellegrini and tells him to be on the lookout for this guy who does risky maneuvers, but they always end up working out. The fact that they always end up working out for big returns is all that Pellegrini hears. He ends up getting the name from Lucas and end up calling Philip in. Philip gets brought in, and there's a wolf in the hen house. Now it's the matter of actually getting into the concert, because Hassan is still wanted for murder after all. But with Philip on the inside, that's not going to be an issue. Philip has Pellegrini and his men wheel a bunch of huge crates in, and one of those crates has Hassan in it. Ben actually ends up helping with this. So both Ben and Philip end up wheeling Hassan in under the guise that it's all computer technology, hardware that will be used to accept the donations for the concert. They do end up getting stopped by Dumont, but Philip talks him out of actually searching every single crate. As Hassan was sneaking in, Sophia was getting word back from forensics that Hassan did not murder Leonard. It's pretty clear to forensics that Leonard was strangled from behind, and the boot size doesn't match Hassan's. So he's not their guy. After she gets off the phone with forensics, that's when Yousef shows her the video that he discovered of Dumont admitting to everything. Yousef and Sophia get the police captain in the room, and Yousef goes over the entire scenario that he's figured out. Everything that's happened. How Dumont's dirty, how Leonard was accused to kill Babacar Diop, how Dumont has been covering it up, how Dumont is in Pellegrini's pocket, the whole nine. So when it comes time for the concert, all the guests show up, but so do the police captain, Yousef, and Sophia. And they're just waiting for Dumont to make some kind of move. While the guests are filing in, Philip, Ben, and Hassan hide off in a room overlooking everything. Philip has the computers ready to go to accept all the donations. And of course, Pellegrini thinks that 85% of the donations are going to go right into his bank account. But he's mistaken. Pellegrini makes his way to his seat, and Juliet takes the stage to welcome everybody and ask them to be generous for this foundation. The concert kicks off, and donations start flying into the computer system. Philip is watching the number tick up and up and up. But as the orchestra plays on, Hassan makes his way to Pellegrini's private box. He sneaks in and puts a knife to Pellegrini's throat. It takes a little bit, but Hassan is able to get Pellegrini to admit to everything. Why he framed his father, kidnapping his son, Leonard killing Fabian on his behest, and that Pascal ended up killing Leonard. But Pellegrini starts mocking him with the fact that the truth isn't going to get him anything, no one's going to believe him, and he's never going to make it out of the concert hall alive. Hassan gets pretty close to actually cutting Pellegrini's throat, but he ends up fleeing. And as soon as he leaves his private box, Pellegrini yells, there he is, there's Hassan Diop, get him. And it leaves Hassan running for his life. Hassan starts running throughout the building. A few times he almost gets caught, but he's able to evade them. Pellegrini's men end up tipping off Dumont that Hassan is in the building. So Dumont ends up leaving and telling the police, he's in there somewhere, go find him. But Pascal has actually located him and cornered him. It's in a dressing room, and Pascal and Hassan start getting into it, both men throwing haymakers at the other. Eventually, though, Hassan ends up knocking Pascal out and locking him in a closet. As Hassan starts making his way to the stage, He's stopped by Dumont at gunpoint. But as Dumont is ordering him to get on his knees, the police captain, Sophia, and Youssef are right behind him telling Dumont to get down because he's under arrest. Sophia also orders Hassan to stay where he is, but Youssef convinces her to just let him go. Dumont is taken into custody, and Hassan takes the stage. As he does so, 
A picture of Hassan and his dad end up going up on the big screen right behind the orchestra. Everybody is shocked that Hassan is taking the stage because he's still wanted for murder. He announces to everybody that Hubert Pellegrini falsely accused his father of stealing that necklace, but he didn't do it. He also says that Pellegrini ordered to have his father murdered as well as Fabian. He then tells the audience that Pellegrini stooped so low to kidnap his own son. As he's saying this, though, police are converging in on the stage so that he has nowhere to go. Right before the police end up coming on stage, he does turn to Juliet and say, Juliet, your father stole from you. Everybody, the money that you donated tonight, Hebrew Pellegrini tried to embezzle it. The police then head on stage to stop Hassan. Hassan puts his arms up to give himself up, and that's when Ben hits the lights and no one can see anything, and there's pure panic in the auditorium. Everybody starts making their way out as fast as possible. Right before he leaves, Philip ends up transferring all the money to another bank account. Then he meets up with Ben, and the two head off. Hassan had stored a disguise away in the room that they were using to collect donations. So he puts that disguise on, and he's able to actually walk right out of the building, past the police, undetected. Or at least, so he thought. He does end up getting caught, but ends up fleeing from the police and hopping in a boat that was waiting for him and driving away. Before he fleed the scene, though, he sent Yusef a message because while he had Pellegrini at knife point, his watch was actually recording the entire interaction, and he sends that audio to Yusef. So when Yusef hears it, he's got Pellegrini dead to rights. So the police end up arresting Hubert Pellegrini as well as Dumont, and they both get taken away. After a job well done, Ben ends up giving Philip the rest of his diamonds that he's owed. But right before they take off, Philip turns to Ben and says, I don't get it. If Hassan wanted to get revenge on Pellegrini, why did he just give him all that money? And Ben tells him, that account isn't Pellegrini's. That account is the foundation's. All the money that was collected is going to the place the people thought it was. Hassan, though, knows he needs to leave town. But before he does, he has to say goodbye to a few people. When Hassan had collected the bracelet off of Claire's arm, he left a device that started going off. And when Claire found it, there was a message on it. Raul was able to figure it out that Hassan wanted them to meet at a bridge. Sure enough, when they show up, Hassan drives under, parks the boat, and heads up top. Hassan gives them a big hug, and Claire asks, is it finished? And Hassan says, yeah, it's all over. But you were right the whole time. I caused way too much trouble with you guys. I need to leave for you. Claire is begging him not to go, but his mind's made up. He gives them one last hug, tells him he loves him, and says, I'll be back. And then... Hassan Diop ends up escaping before the police can get him. And that is the end of season two of Lupin, or chapter two, whatever they're calling it. Anyway, yeah, that's the end of the season. Thank you so much for watching this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel. If you liked it, there's a thumbs up button for that. If you thought it sucked, there's a thumbs up button for that as well. I try not to read the comments because nasty comments make me feel bad. So if you're about to type one out, that's what the thumbs down button's for. Smash it. Smash it hard. I have merch. Buy a mug. Buy a sticker. I have bills to pay. I would like to pay those bills. Merch helps with that. I'll see you guys for season three. And once again, thank you so much for watching.